Today we're gonna make 87 bourbon smokers all in one car. We're gonna sell these for $25 a piece. That's over $2,000 in less than a half a day. All right, so now that the bowl and tray bit has given us the contours that we want and kind of roughed out the material, we're gonna swap it out for this quarter inch down cut bit that's gonna do all of our profile cuts for us. That was a close call. The air hose for the air assist for the laser got caught on the back of the CNC. That could have been bad. So the quarter inch down cut bit just finished up its tool path. Went well, honestly, everything lined up great. I'm happy with that. Now it's time to do some customization and we're gonna do that by switching to my laser. So the power of CNC and uh, production in my two car garage blows my mind. Every time I see uh, this or do something like this, it just the capability blows my mind. These are the filters that I use, and they will be linked in the description below. Uh, they're just off Amazon. Here's one of those uh, prototypes that I was talking about that I had made, and I just got this to show you how this, how this fits in here. So this is just designed to be friction fit. It just sets in there just like that. Then what you do is you just take a pinch. You don't need a lot. You see how much I've got there? A pinch, drop it into the bourbon smoker, Maybe a little bit more. And this doesn't have to be just bourbon. This can be a cocktail smoker, whiskey, anything you can imagine you can smoke. So the next key part is the torch that you use. I've got these little butane, butane torches um, off from Amazon that work well. Uh, I'll link them in the description as well. But the key is, is that whatever you're using is blowing downward or blowing in. A lighter won't work because the smoke will just raise up. So you need that, that blowing uh, thing. So let's see if we can get it to work here. Watch the bottom, the smoke will come out the bottom. All right, so watch right here, the smoke will come out the bottom. This will be over a glass, but it just burns it. And so, yeah, but the key is, is that you have a torch that blows through, through the bottom. What I want to do is I want to slow it down and go over some of the details. All right, so we're literally going to start. Step one, I milled down the wood. So in order to do this, this isn't one big glue up. These are all, this is 11 individual panels that are four inches and five sixteenths wide. And that is based on the space I need for the width of my bourbon smoker. So the width of the bourbon smoker is three inches, and, but then I need space for my quarter inch bit to cut on both sides. So uh, that puts at four inches. So I had five sixteenths and that is split on both sides of clearance uh, on each board. 
So in order to do this, you have to mill all the boards to the exact same size. Then what I do is I come into my software, I'm using Vectric here, and um, I create rectangles that are exactly the same size as my stock material. Then what I do is I align my design, so my bourbon, my bourbon smoker um, design, um, to those rectangles. So think about it as like you're aligning your, um, your vectors um, to the boards. And then what I do is once I get everything laid out in there, I know everything's lined up and I come over and I lay the boards exactly how I got them laid in Vectric and I know everything is gonna be perfectly lined up. So that's what I did today and it works flawlessly every single time. Uh, everything hit its marks and everything was aligned uh, perfectly. So you may be wondering why I didn't carve a uh, smoker out of this bottom left-hand corner. And the reason is, is because that's where I zeroed to. And I didn't want to carve a smoker there and lose the opportunity to reset my X, Y, Z, zero. If something had went wrong, uh, this was kind of my safety. Now, I could go back and uh, carve a smoker out of it uh, last, and that's something that I thought of after the fact. But basically, this was my safety area where I knew it wasn't going to move, it wasn't going to change, and I could always go back and reset my zero. So you saw the first pocket. Um, it's kind of my main pocket. I used a bowl and tray bit, a three quarter inch bowl and tray bit with a half inch shank on the spindle on the Avid CNC. You can take half inch shank bits. And so I was able to run that at 250 inches per minute, which is a lot for a three quarter inch bit. So that's how much material I was running, um, cutting on the first pass. And then I was doing, I'll have to look exactly, um, I'll put it down here, but the step over, um, was something like uh, 20%. And so that's how far the bit's moving over each time. So that is a merge tool path, as you can see here on the screen, uh, two pockets. So that was the big pocket, the small pocket. The big pocket went to a depth of uh, five eighths. So that's another thing to mention. The white oak sock that I started with was milled to seven eighths, which is eight uh, 0.875. So I went down a quarter of an inch, which gives me a five eighths thickness, uh, overall. And I do that because I want this chimney here and I want, I use a bowl and tray bit because I want that contour on the bottom of the chimney and on the inside. So those are the two pockets. The, the middle pocket goes um, a little bit deeper. It goes uh, three eighths, I believe. And, uh, so that's the first merged tool path. All right, so before I forget, merge toolpaths, you'll see that these are grouped into two uh, merged toolpaths. And that is um, for the uh, similar bits. It's the same bit, but two different toolpaths. And what that does is rather than going and doing the first main tool um, toolpath first on every single one and traveling back to do the second one, it does the main tool path, and then it comes over, because it's using the same exact tool, comes over and does this one. So it's half the amount of traveling. Because it's basically, you'd be doing, you're doing one lap versus two, two laps around all the boards. So next, the second merge tool path is, that's when we did the tool change, and we switched to the quarter inch down bit, down cut bit. And uh, there's three tool paths in there. Uh, two pockets, which are one for the filter and then one to cut all the way through uh, for the smoke to come out the bottom and then the profile uh, cut around the outside. I'm holding these in place with two tabs on the corners where I have the strategically placed um, on the bulk of the material. I didn't do it right on the sides because I didn't know how close I would be uh, to the edge of the material and if I didn't have material there, then it would just get cut off. So I'll cut all the tabs with a multi-tool. Yeah, it's gonna take a while, but I built this whole setup to make sure nothing moved on me. And because if anything moved, it would throw the whole thing off. So I wanna make sure nothing moved at all. Uh, I didn't use any double-sided tape. It's all physical um, tabs and screws to hold everything in place. So feeds and speeds for the quarter inch bit. This is where I could have improved. Um, I was really happy with the bowl and tray bit but the tool path for the quarter inch downcut bit, um, the negative 
is that I was recutting a lot of material. So a down cut bit is ejecting all those chips downwards. And what dulls bits very quickly is recutting material you've already recut. In order to film the first couple <laughs> of the process without my dust shoe on, I had dust collection on, uh, but I didn't have the dust shoe on so I could film it for you. Then I realized I would have had to restart over if I wanted to put the dust shoe back on and I didn't want to do that. So I just ran it without the dust shoe. So as you saw, a lot of dust built up on the surface and I was just recutting that material um, every time. So I did have to slow my initial feed rate of 200 inches per minute on that bit um, down to, I slowed it down a third. So it's 66%. So I was still going 120, 130 inches per minute uh, on that tool path. So what would I improve? One, I would improve the uh, dust collection to try to get more of those chips out of there. And then I would have been able to run um, faster. That was just an observation on my part. As it was going, I'm like, uh, there's a, it's recutting a lot of chips. It's a lot of load. If I don't slow that down, it's gonna end up um, heating up really, especially cutting all these, it's gonna heat up really fast. And then that leads to bits breaking. So that was kind of an adjustment on the fly. The last thing, as far as toolpaths go, is the laser toolpath. Yes, that's right, laser toolpath. If you noticed, obviously you noticed, I did it all without removing anything. I cut, I, I carved everything with the CNC router, I switched over to the laser, and it's as simple as, with, a, with my Avid um, setup, is as easy as switching from the bowl and tray bit to the down cut bit. So the laser is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, again, I'm in Kentucky, and uh, we're gonna be selling these at Kentucky Craft Fairs. Uh, we've got four craft fairs coming up that this is gonna be stock for. And so uh, that is why I put Kentucky on all of them. I think it's gonna be, be really, really good. So next steps, like I said, is to use a multi-tool, cut all the tabs out, get all these out, um, take them to the oscillating belt sander, clean up the tabs, clean up the edges a little bit. And then um, I'm, gonna use, I'm gonna sand them uh, a little bit probably with one of those mop sanders, um, just to take the, the rough edges off them. And then um, they're gonna be ready to go. Uh, I haven't decided I might put a mineral oil finish on them, but to be honest with you, I don't think I'm going to. I think I might just leave them the way they are. I don't know, that's yet to be seen. If you have any input on that, let me know down in the comments below um, or what you thought. So one other thought about cleaning them up is in the tool paths, in the profile tool paths, the final cutout, I have it set up to do this, do separate last pass. And this is set at 0.02 inches, um, so two hundredths of an inch. So if the first pass on your tool path, you only go down halfway, right? So say I, my depth of cut was uh, 0.3, uh, you're gonna have a tool mark there. So what I do is it goes down 0.3, and then it goes down another 0.3, and then it moves over uh, horizontally 0 0.02 inches and so it cleans up all of those tooling marks on the edges. So that really helps too. So honestly, if I wasn't using tabs, these would, they would be very clean um, on the edges. So for making 87 of anything, uh, the amount of issues I had today were very little. And until Andrew, my cameraman showed up, um, he's bad luck. But uh, so, uh, as the CNC was going, I was, I was off to the side and I was looking. Um, one of the air hoses for the laser got stuck on the back side of the CNC. And the, scene, and the CNC was all the way forward. And so luckily I have a lot of slack. Kind of see over here on the side. Luckily I had a lot of slack because otherwise it would have snapped that off and that would have, that would have put us back a little, a little while. So I would have had to reconnect it. And, not a big deal. Um, but other than that, and other than the dust collection and the down cut bit recutting chips, uh, it was a pretty flawless day, which that is a knock on a lot of oak wood. Now, something I didn't talk about is I did run some tests. Uh, like I said in that other video, that was working out all the kinks, switching from routing to lasering and learning that whole process. Um, so I did make uh, I ran like five tests on single bourbon um, smokers just to try to dial it in and dial the design. So it wasn't like I just did the file, jumped out here and hit go. There was a lot of previous work done, but it all worked out because today was a flawless day of CNC and it makes me a lot 
a happy, lot happy. <laughs> Makes me a lot happy. So we're gonna sell these at our four upcoming markets. So we're gonna sell these for a minimum of $25 a piece. So 25 times 87 uh, equals 2,175. Now we're gonna subtract the raw material uh, cost, which is uh, $150 for the white oak. So we have $2,025. Now let's figure out the time that we have into this. So uh, from milling the wood until now, uh, we have under three and a half hours. It's like three hours and 15 minutes. Let's just do three and a half hours. So divide that by 3.5, and that is $578.57 per hour. So that is not a bad half day's worth of work. So one thing I wanted to do with this video was show the true performance of my Avid CNC. And a lot of that is me, is I'm the limiting factor. This machine is capable of a lot more. And I think, I hope a lot of you can relate to that. So if you have a smaller machine, uh, like I, I did and I still do, I have my shape go downstairs. Obviously you can't do it at these speeds and maybe not at this scale, but you can 100%, I've proven that concept over and over again. Uh, I will have a video up here, over here somewhere um, about how I used to do batches on my Shapeoko CNC. And it took longer. The batches were smaller. I couldn't make as much money as fast. Um, but that is why there is a difference between um, a machine like this and a machine like that. So hopefully this draws kind of a clearer picture. I don't want this to make it feel like, oh, you, oh, you can't do this or anything like that. Like you totally can do this. It just might be smaller but I think it's um, a disservice if you don't understand what a machine like this is capable of as well. If you wanna learn more about these bourbon smokers, be sure to check out Hamilton Dilbeck's video right up here. I'll link it up above here. Uh, if he does a deep dive on everything you would ever want to know about bourbon smokers, check that video out. So speaking of those videos that I did like two and three years ago where I was batching on my smaller CNC right here, Click right there and you can see the difference, how far I've come in two to three years. And I think it would be very eye-opening. Click right there and I will see you in that video. Thanks for watching.